Hi and welcome to this uh, video. Uh, in this video I'm going to uh, do an environment study and to change it up a bit I'm going to actually do a uh, real-time uh, painting. So the video is probably going to take me two hours or the video is going to be two hours long and I'll narrate uh, in real-time uh, you know if you're up for it um, totally you know just uh, enjoy and sit back. It's going to take a while, it's a bit slow paced maybe I might actually speed up some parts eventually, but I'll, I don't know yet, I'll see. Um, so yeah, the study that I'm going to do today is this uh, photo. So um, it's part of sort of challenge to do a study every two days of the month. And this is the second one. Um, so yeah, the time limit is two hours um, and there's no tracing to be uh, done. It's not, uh, it's against the rules. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get started. Um, so two hours starting now. It's quarter to nine in the evening. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this. Uh, and actually, let's uh, crop the image to be a little bit larger so I can fit two of them. Like so. And I'm going to paste it on top and just put it next to it like that. Like that. Um, then I'm going to actually uh, lock this layer on transparent pixels. So that means that I can't paint outside of the bounds of the image like that. And I'm going to fill it with black, with black like that using uh, alt backspace. Uh, if there's any shortcuts that you might not follow, because I use a lot, uh, feel free to just ask me in the comments or anything like that. Um, so let me fill the background here with a fairly neutral um, uh, middle uh, gray and uh, we can get started. I have control F bound to flipping the canvas. I'm using Photoshop CS5 so I can do all this kind of funky stuff like this and the, the whole panning thing is because I'm in full, uh, full screen mode actually. So like this and then I press tab to bring up my windows and I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's, uh, it's a very useful feeling of uh, freedom, especially in CS5 with the canvas rotation stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually set up my workspace. I'm going to save the file real quick as a study or the 3rd of February. Let's do the environment study. All right, so we can control S whenever we want to. And um, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna make a new window. So window arrange and then new window for blah, blah, blah. And you can see that we have two windows for the exact same painting now. One of them is gonna get we scaled down, whoops. I wanna put it in the, uh, this corner like so. There we go, and it's actually the same actual window, so you'll notice that um, I can paint on here, and it's going to show up here, and I can paint here as well. Uh, whoops. I can paint here, and it's going to show up here. So that's kind of cool. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is Control G, my transparent layer, and uh, I'm going to Control click on the layer window so that I have my selected pixels. I'm going to go to the group and press the mask button. So now the group has this mask and I can just add layers and stuff um, and just paint without having to worry about um, exiting the uh, the bounds of the image. So that's actually more useful than locking the transparency. Uh, so now I can make new layers and stuff. Um, okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is zoom way out and just use my airbrush, uh, a very soft brush like so and just find some colors. So that's fairly straightforward. That's gonna be a little bit more saturated like this. And it goes to a very grayish tone. There's a lot more brightness at the top here. That's basically how I pick my colors uh, in the very beginning. Very broad um, choices here. So. Uh, it's going to go darker fairly quickly. Um, that I can see a little bit of green in there. 
Whoops, brighter. Uh, that's too much. And I'm just uh, I'm painting here, but I'm actually looking uh, a lot in the even smaller version of it. So let's bring up some more dark areas at the bottom here. All right, and let's bring up a little bit of a harder brush. So I have my round brush here, hardness in the middle. Oh, this should be a lot darker. Um, I'm already measuring essentially um, with the very big shapes here. Uh, it's going to be a bunch darker again. It's going to go up to here. It's going to go like this. It's going to go like this. Like this. Still fairly. Correct, and then we have another strand that goes blah 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 like that. All right, and then we have a final one here that goes way down, like so. All right. It's a bit of an annoying piece because the background is very smooth and it's basically just a gradient, um, but the foreground is fairly, you know, hard edged and uh, that's going to be a bit annoying to get right because we're going to have to work with layers so I don't mess up the background too much. <clears throat> Since, you know, when I'm painting the foreground, you might tend to, uh, uh, you might tend to actually fix it using a color that you pick, like, like I did before, let's say we get the silhouette right but we make an error like that and what you would do is actually color pick the background and then fix it but then you ruin the actual gradient you can see um, so that's going to be a little bit of an issue that's what's going on in my mind right now so uh, I need to make sure that I get this on a proper layer uh, so I'm actually going to lighten this sort of sketch a lot uh, and then just, just do it on a separate layer eventually. So I'm still looking at the smaller version here. It's going to be a lot brighter right there at the top. That might be too much. There we go. And we have some more pinkish uh, orange over there. Like so, that should probably be a bit more correct. Let's make a new layer, Control Shift N, and uh, let's see if I can get the general shape here of this. Uh, mountain range, I guess. Uh, very interesting image, probably heavily photoshopped already, so let's see here, we have a darker, a darker edge right there. And I'm going to have to smooth all of this out. Of course, um, this is the wrong color, it's way too green, it needs to be redder, like that. And I'm actually going to make a selection here. Like that. There we go. And now we can smooth that nice and green. Um, I do a lot of selection painting, so like for these rocks, I might do this and this and this and this. Uh, so I have everything that I need of keyboard shortcuts set to my uh, left hand. So everything is reachable. Um, to me, the original keyboard shortcuts for the lasso tool was L, obviously, but L is uh, quite far away, if you will, on the keyboard. So I changed it to C, um, so it's all very close to uh, each other. 
so I will very quickly, you know, uh, switch between these things. It's very, um, it's probably a good idea if you want to do this um, in any sort of serious way to adjust your work setup to be absolutely perfect for you. So uh, even small things like making keys, changing keys to be a little bit closer can really help you eventually. You know, if you all, if you count it up, um, the amount of seconds that you save eventually, it's probably worth it. So that's definitely not a, not a bad idea to take some time and uh, figure stuff out. Um, this workspace itself, you might have noticed, is fairly different to the standard um, workspace. So I have my tool presets with all my brushes right here. And the bonus of this is that the tool presets are always on screen so I can pick whatever I want. They're very easy to create and you actually can store color, opacity and flow inside a tool preset. So it's better than a brush in almost every way. Um, I can't really think of any um, disadvantage. It's probably better in any way, in every way. So, and then I have the Magic Picker, which is a plugin that I bought to have my color picker on screen at all times. It's also definitely worth uh, worth checking out. It's very useful. So this is a way to green also. It needs to be a lot redder, darker. Like that, and then it goes to a more uh, softer light. Um, let's let's do selections. Actually, there's all these kind of peaks, peaks in the of trees. So that's going to be a bit of annoying uh, to paint. So I'm just going to do selection. And it's going to be too sharp because of the selection thing. So I'm going to have to blur it a bit. Uh, smudge brush, which is S for me. I'm just going to smudge out the edges so they're not too uh, anti-aliased, if you will. Uh, you get that with uh, selection painting. Um, when you do something like this, you can see that they're not smooth at all. You want something more like this. And to get that, you just smudge it. These are all things that I've uh, found from just painting a lot of stuff. So you, you find solutions for, for things if you really uh, need them. Eventually, you'll just start to get comfortable in the in the software and just find stuff. It's quite a cool cool thing to, when you're at that point that you can basically solve every issue by just uh, knowing the program very well. It's not the color. Eyeballing colors is really uh, something to, that you have to learn. So <clears throat> it takes a lot of, it just takes a lot of, a lot of time put into it. So you'll get better at it if you're not too uh, confident with picking colors yet. Uh, just keep pushing. It really, really helps to have a smaller version like this, it's much easier to, 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 to grasp mistakes if you just look at this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible not to see the differences. And continually, one thing that I really, really want to stress is that you always have to check your proportions at all times. You can see, I just noticed that the peak here, right here, I don't know if you can see that, Let's make a new layer actually uh, outside this group. This peak is absolutely way too high, um, or it's way too low on my painting. So I just noticed that, so I'm going to have to fix that. It's going to be more or less something like this. So that changes almost the entire dynamic of uh, this little portion of the image because it's also going to be, <coughs> if I left it like that, like a if I left that mistake, I would have actually painted the tree too small because I would have 
um, gone off of the fact that the tree starts at the peak, the little um, uh, indentation there, and the entire tree would have been smaller actually. It would have brought on a lot of more mistakes if I hadn't fixed it. So it goes up like this. This is still the wrong color. It's a lot more green. Uh, so what I'm going to do is get this, make it greener, not that much. All right. And I'm actually going to go, I'm going to press five on the keyboard. So now my opacity changes, so five to get 50% opacity and just kind of um, glaze over the area that I want. This top is going to be a lot more dark. Uh, again, kind of glaze over it very smoothly with an airbrush this time. So I want 100%, 50%. There we go, and actually, let's do that, All right. Let's smooth out this area, that, so we get the hard edge over there. Let's fix that a little bit. Thank God for undo. That's it's really the most um, useful thing about painting digitally. It's just the undo button. So you really should take advantage of it. If you're used to traditional painting, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's why digital stuff uh, exists. That's why it's preferred. Uh, nowadays, for most artists at least, uh, because you can make mistakes and it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's a lot more forgiving and uh, that's not a bad thing, that's actually a good thing. It's technology just helping us out. There's no reason to be afraid of advances in technology, as uh, I've read one time, which really um, kind of struck me as an interesting point. If Leonardo da Vinci was alive today, he would be a digital painter. So, yeah. Throughout time, the biggest, most, uh, you know, most famous artists have always been very much into latest technologies and stuff. And yeah, basically all of them were pretty big on using the latest kinds of paints and stuff like that. So it's definitely the case that if they were alive today, they would be a digital painter. Uh, I've seen a lot of prejudice against uh, CGI and digital painting. People that just don't understand it, they think it's very, very easy for some reason. Um, it's just a tool, it just gives some benefits, but it's the same thing essentially. I mean, you need this. You need the actual skills, unless you're actually just color picking and tracing. You know, that's the difference. But you can do that in, in in reality as well. You could just trace an image and pretend you're an artist. Uh, that doesn't doesn't have anything to do with digital painting. But still, I, I've uh, I've had to deal with a lot of prejudice myself already. Um, um, at the beginning of my career, and even now, I already have to deal with a lot of, you know, people who don't understand it. And they, they think it's pressing a button and it's done, but it's not. So I do make it a point to kind of, you know, try and show them and explain them how it works. Um, and especially the 
showing your tablet really makes a difference. Uh, a lot of people don't know what a tablet is, a, a painting tablet. Um, they have no idea it exists. They think these things are just done with a mouse or something, uh, which obviously doesn't make any sense. But yeah, if you show them the tablet, they usually understand it a little bit more uh, instantly. Uh, on that note, I'm using an Intuos 3, um, A4, and you know, if you were wondering, it's yeah, I think it's the the better choice, but it's really up to preference. Um, I've tried a lot of tablets before, and this one just is the one that sticks for me. I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit more. Let's turn on my opacity. It's not perfect, I can see a lot of mistakes so far, but it's mm, that's good enough, not really, not yet, it's not good enough yet. I want to really nail this before I start painting the tree, because it's going to be the main thing of the piece anyway. Might as well take my time to get this background a little bit correct here. I've been going for... 20 minutes now, so that's fairly good. Still have a lot of time left. can see a little sort of god ray coming down here and actually I just noticed that as it goes to the bottom it gets a little lighter so like that and then the tips need to be a bit darker yeah that's much better <clears throat> All right, so now the annoying part is to get these kind of uh, sharp uh, edged treetops in here. So it's gonna be a bit annoying. I'm gonna bring up this image and just kind of, you know, use my selection brush again. Just power through it. Uh, that's a lot better. One thing you can do when you do selection uh, painting, if you will, is you can make your selection. Like so. And you can actually hide your selection by pressing Control H, but it's still there. Uh, so that's a useful thing to do. So you can actually see what you're doing. Because uh, the actual Walking ants can be a little bit annoying. Notice how this is way more saturated. Um, I'm gonna see if I can apply a trick here. I'm gonna. Mm, nah, not really. I wanna do the highlights. Nope. 
shadows. Oh, I'm using the wrong tool here. Dodge is what I want. Oh, there we go, that's better. Same here. Just a little bit of dodge. It's uh, it's a very dangerous tool to use, dodge and burn, because uh, it actually doesn't... Um, you would think that it's a useful thing to light stuff, but it isn't, because dodge and burn does the wrong thing. Um, when you're lighting an object, like a cylinder or something, it doesn't actually... the color doesn't saturate, but dodge and burn does saturate. So it's only useful if you need to make it lighter and saturated. Um, so that's something to really take into account uh, when you're thinking of using this tool. It's fairly dangerous to make mistakes with. Especially if you're starting out, again, try to avoid it. Try to do everything with uh, good old paintbrushes. Unless you need something that has to be more saturated and uh, yeah, lighter, so it can be useful if you know what you're doing. That might have been a little bit too much. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more uh, bigger peaks because I noticed that they're fairly small. The ones I did uh, with this little bulge has to do. Alright, I'm fairly content with that so far. Uh, that's fairly good. Alright, so let's uh, move on. Let's see what we got here. We got a little lake thingy going on. And then obviously the tree. Um, I'm going to do the lake stuff first. So let's see. A uh, new layer, and so I can see a little bit of blue, obviously, reflection. That's actually bad Photoshop, because um, the sky is actually orange. But the reflection of this guy is blue. So yeah, the person who photoshopped it didn't really know what was going on. I guess, uh, but still I'm gonna paint it the way he made it. Maybe it's a sunset behind the mountains and the sky above the tree is actually blue. I don't know. Something to think about. It's not that blue, actually, is it? No. It's more of a very desaturated, dark, purple kind of thing. Not that purple. Not that white. No, that's not it. Um, <clears throat> I also just noticed that the bottom of the gradient is actually darker. So this entire thing has to be darkened up. Uh, that's white. All right. And then we have sort of uh, a shape like this. You can see the lightness kind of stops right there. So just analyzing the pick. Let's go a little bit lower in percentage, or opacity. It's still a bunch darker.
All right, so let's find out what this area is like. It's pretty dark uh, in general, so I'm just gonna kind of base coat it with uh, almost black. Let's try and find the water color. Darker. Um, it's darker still. One thing you'll notice is that when I'm trying to find a color, I always check it on the canvas because colors are very relative. They're very dependent on the colors around them. So you can never check a color in the here you always have to put it on the actual image and then see if it's right or not. It's brighter. Well, that's fairly good for a base coat. And now again, let's bring in some harder edged brushes. Get some stuff going on there. Some trees and stuff. That's good. Cool. All right. Um, I might not want to use 100% opacity. I do want it to be fairly smooth. Let's bring down the flow as well to like 20. Well, that's too much. Uh, this image is, well, the background at least is very much about edge control. I mean, you have hard edges and you have soft edges. Uh, you also have lost edges, but uh, I'm not going to get into that just yet. Uh, but mainly this is about hard, hard and soft edges. So you have this uh, area which is very, you know, a very sharp hard edge and then you have soft edges all over the place and it's basically just gra gradient until you have a hard edge again here and then another hard edge another hard edge and then it's a bunch of fairly um, uh, hard uh, edged tr trees there I want to see if I can paint this stuff uh, hold on a sec. All right, so where was I? I was interrupted. Okay. Um, doing the whole water thing here with the reflections of trees and stuff. It's all fairly soft, but I'm painting it with a very hard brush for now. I'll soften it up in a little bit. Uh, 
Um, something to keep in mind is that it is, it's a study, so uh, even though I do want to make it fairly photorealistic, photo at least from a distance, it's just a study, so I'm trying to actually learn stuff out of this. So I'm actually, you know, taking into consideration the colors and the the way the image is set up. So it's a very nice composition. Um, mainly it's about colors, I think. Uh, maybe some interesting tree shapes. Uh, this is quite cool as well. I could probably use that a lot in some speed paintings and stuff. This kind of style of rock and grass. It, it reminds me of um, of planes, basically. So I could probably use that technique uh, or that um, visual style later on. So it's it's all about trying to store these things into your brain. Whenever you do studies, you just want to. It's like uh, it's like um, making your weapon arsenal a little bit bigger. So you know, it's like you have new. Um, soldiers to put into the fight, basically. That's how I think of it, so... Uh, when I'm done with this, uh, I should be a little bit better at painting, essentially. Not only in, te in terms of techniques, but also in terms of knowledge. Uh, that's my point, really. <clears throat> so, uh, let's tackle this... This, this bit right here, so... I'm not going to make it exactly the same. The entire thing is uh, too tall again. Um, so what I did is uh, I copy merged, and I'm just going to transform it a bit and uh, fix the edge it leaves. Just smoothing this out again. Um, square brush. I like this uh, new brush that I made. It's basically just a square. Uh, I don't know why, but it's it feels kind of better than a round brush for some reason. Even though it doesn't make a big of a difference whatever brush you use, but still. Uh, if you're interested in getting my tool presets, just ask. I have them uploaded somewhere, I think. And uh, I have absolutely no problem with sharing my brushes. Um, you probably heard it before, but, you know, I'll just repeat it again. Brushes don't really matter, so don't put all your faith in having brushes. It's absolutely not important. It's just brushes. So you can do everything that you see um, but with using just a, a round brush. And uh, I paint most of the time, actually, I used to paint most of the time with the default dry media brushes. Um, nowadays I paint more with the square brush, which should take all of 10 seconds to make, really. So yeah, they're not a really a big deal at all. Um, I see a lot of people who think brushes are magical tools to make you awesome, but they aren't, and everyone who's even a little bit good repeats this same fact over and over. It's not about the brushes.
because basically everyone asks people for their brushes. And I don't know why, but yeah. Besides, it's actually way, way better to make your own brushes because uh, they're yours. And if you need a brush, make it as you go along, basically. Um, if you get brushes from someone, chances are you're not going to know exactly why or when to use them. It's it's weird to... I can't even imagine using someone else's brush. Um, it doesn't seem like a plan at all, if you know what I mean. Alright, so... Let's evaluate this a little bit. I can see that uh, my values values are still a little bit off uh, here and there. So let's try and fix that. Especially here. All right, so now let's uh, let's bring in the lighter um, values of the trees here. They're very orangey. Considering the limit of two hours, I'm probably going to have to uh, start painting the tree. Um, I think we're doing uh, close on 45 minutes now. Uh, so I should probably get that tree going. Uh, it's the most important part of the piece, obviously. I don't want to miss... Um, well, I don't want to lack time to paint the tree properly, so you can always come back to this if necessary. All right, so let's do this tree thingy, new layer, and I'm going to start with a very dark color, and I'm going to block in. Pretty much black actually. And I'm going to block in the entire shape of the rocks.
It's not going to be perfect, but that's not the point. All right, let's block in the tree. My original sketch is completely gone by now, so I'm going to have to do that again. It's not a big deal. I'm constantly doing vertical and horizontal checks of the proportions. So what I would do is actually see if this is the same height, like that, uh, like so. And then I would check if it's the same like that. So this should be around the first, um, first uh, indention, indentation right here. So, and then we have the angle that goes like that. And at that point is where the tree goes up. So right around here, uh, actually, right around here. So it's too long right now. And I can also check uh, different, uh, there's a method actually called triangulation. Uh, I'm gonna show you exactly so what goes on in my mind is this basically right now. So you have this point, very, very obvious. And uh, maybe we have this point and it's triangulation like that. So you make a triangle and it's very easy to see um, if a triangle matches or not. So what you would do then in your mind again is draw this triangle and see if it's correct or not. And one thing you notice exactly, or instantly rather, is that this is sloped down, so this point is actually off. It has to be here somewhere, uh, stuff like that, uh, because triangles are very, um, they're like the most basic thing to, the most basic shape to um, recognize. It's very simple to recognize angles and slopes like that. So what you would do if you want to get something completely perfect uh, is triangulate um, all the time, basically to make sure that it's exactly the right um, the right proportions. So it goes up like that, up like that, beyond to point underneath this we have a little branch going off like so it's also very interesting to actually do the angle like that so you you make the movement and then you make it again it's very easy to repeat the same uh, angle if you've done it uh, you know, if you've trained your hand, uh, it becomes much easier to just copy the same angle. Uh, so let's move this layer back. Actually, let's keep it like that. And we have a little dip right here. And then back. Notice I'm not I'm not zooming in like this, because um, making these lines is a lot easier at a distance to make a straight line than when you would do it like this. It's way harder to make a proper line. So you want to always um, stay as far away as you can at any one time. Then uh, we then we're gonna have the you know the bushes and stuff. It's going to continue on to here. Like so down with a little, you have a little puff right here. 
and over here as well. I'm going to focus on the branch for now. Uh, so we have one curving off like this. Since the main shape is uh, pretty much established, I'm going to be a little bit looser now with the little branches. I don't need to actually match them perfectly anymore. I'll figure it, figure it out as I go. So basically, a little puff here. A little puff like that. And then we have very dominant uh, shape like this that basically touches the other side of the tree. That's basically it. Oh, I forgot the branch that goes down, obviously. Just going to do this one. It's fairly important. So it's basically just a curve, actually. Something I forgot to mention is that I have my keyboard shortcuts for smaller and bigger brush adjusted as well. So it's A and R for me. Um, just like you would a first person shooter, basically. Um, your A and R keys are very easy to get to, and uh, I change my brush constantly. So as I'm doing this curve, I would actually change my brush to be smaller because the, uh, the branch goes off into the distance and it makes it makes it obviously smaller. So it actually adjusts my brush as I'm doing this uh, curve. Uh, eventually you don't think about it anymore, you just kind of do it. I'm just simplifying these uh, trees, or these uh, bushes, or uh, puffs of leaves into very simple shapes. It makes it a lot easier eventually to tackle them. And actually warp it just a little bit, or distort it rather. So, because I see that the distance between the rock and the the leaves here are actually is actually a lot closer to it. All right, and then finally, little puffs here. Yeah, that's very good fairly good and um, it's time to add some color to this branch. I'm actually going to start with the rocks here. So what I might do is actually select the basic shapes.
All right, and let's fill it in with some stuff. So, see some blues, very, very um, muted blues here. It's fairly warm in general, actually. Especially here. Got some purples going on there as well. Okay, so let's inverse my selection. A second here, and I'm actually gonna try to get some of these basic whoops, basic hues and values in here. Got a very saturated and dark bit right here. It's very red. Then it goes a little bit more orangey and stuff up here. Very uh, rough for now. Uh, I can see that it's a lot darker in these bits uh, from the distance, so it's a lot more obvious when you look at it in small uh, in the small window. Again, it's very useful to have one of these small windows. Uh, it's so much easier to see uh, if you make a if you make a big mistake, um, you can instantly see it. At this point I'm not even worrying about the fact that it's grass and that's rocks. I'm just seeing chunks of value and chunks of color and that's basically what I'm painting as well. I'm not thinking about it as a rock. I'm not thinking about it as a bunch of grass. That's, that's really something you want to um, 
get good at is not thinking about the actual object it is, but it's a it's a, it's just a combination of shapes and stuff essentially. And that's the way you want to think about it. Just a bunch of values, and if you do that, if you get good at that, it becomes immensely easy to paint stuff like crowds and um, just a lot of people is a very uh, prominent way of actually testing if you're good at that or not. Because painting a face isn't easy, but if you're completely confident with just recognizing shapes of stuff, making a painting with a lot of faces becomes very easy. Um, because it's just a bunch of shapes. It's the same thing as what I'm painting right now. Just some shapes and colors and stuff. And the actual face will create itself out of these shapes. Um, you don't need to look at it as a sh as an actual face. In fact, doing so will actually um, it, will, it will actually make it harder. Uh, it's a very known fact um, that the brain, especially when we're talking about faces, actually, the brain sees things um, that aren't really. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain, but um, actually, I need to make a drawing to show you. The brain sees things in symbols, essentially. So if you're thinking about an eye, what your brain sees isn't an actual eye, but what it sees is stuff like this. That's what the brain sees. Uh, same thing for a mouth. You know, this is what a, a mouth looks like in your brain, essentially. Or a nose is kind of like this. And that's why people who don't know how to draw, they draw eyes like this. Same thing for kids and whatnot. That's what an eye looks like in the brain. So, your brain doesn't see things the way they are, and that's a difficult thing to grasp, but it's actual fact. And the thing that an artist needs to learn is to actually look past the symbolic um, view of your brain, and actually look at the shapes and the colors and the actual thing that you're seeing. Uh, that's what you want to achieve. So that's why when you paint a portrait, it's actually a good idea to flip it upside down and then paint it. It's going to look a lot better. It's going to look as if your brain didn't have anything to say in it because it didn't recognize it as a face, essentially. Um, if I didn't explain that too, if I didn't explain that well, feel free to ask me any questions because uh, it's a fairly difficult concept to, to grasp, but uh, it's very important to know about uh, if you're an artist that you basically want to overrule your brain and kind of, uh, yeah, that's essentially it. Um, so we're getting a little bit more uh, into these uh, into these rocks here. I think I'm getting some of these values fairly correct at the moment. So what I'm going to do is actually change my brush to a little bit more textural. It's essentially the same, it's a square brush, but if you press soft, it has some more texture to it. Um, so it's, I call it my rock brush, but I, I actually use it for other stuff as well. Um, You might notice that sometimes I pull up colors in, uh, or actually black and white without doing, or without picking any colors, and that's just uh, the D key. It will default your colors to black and white. And that way, if you want to add some black somewhere, um, you can just very easily just press D and you got black and white. However, um, if you want to darken, like if you want to shade something, never shade with black because that's exactly not what the world works, or what the world looks like. Um, 
every material has a different um, uh, way of um, changing in shadow and light. Yeah, it's never black or white that's added to it. That doesn't. That's not how it works. Uh, but a very, you know, simple um, thing to remember is that generally, uh, and it's not a, it's not a rule always, but generally, what you want to do is actually for shadow, you want to let's say we have this value. For shadow, you want to go. Uh, down and to the right, so more saturated and darker, like so. And uh, so let's, let's do it. And then for light, you want to go up and uh, less saturated. So essentially, you're making a diagonal like that. Um, that's more or less kind of like what it is like. If you were to shade with black and white, you would get like um, this and this. which is obviously not the way it works. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is um, like if you have your midtone and then you shade to, so you go down to the shadow, what you want to do is you want to go towards the, uh, you want to change the hue as well a little bit. So let's say we have a warm light, that would mean we have a very cold shadow. So you want to roll up to blue, so up. It's not that much though, um, so let's pick this color and just a little bit up to blue, like so. Um, same thing, the opposite, if you have a warm light, you'll want to make your, actually it's the other way around, sorry. Um, so warm light, you want to roll up, like so, and then a dark or a, a cold shadow, you would want to roll down because it's because uh, it works like that, down. And uh, one more thing to think about is that in shadow, um, if you have a bluish shadow, um, it's actually, I'm going to be kind of intuitive to what I just said, but it, sometimes instead of making a blue shadow, what you would do is actually like uh, just desaturate it a lot and it will seem blue in some situations. Not always, but sometimes um, blue doesn't necessarily mean it's blue. It might just be desaturated. And I know that might not make sense if you don't know what I'm talking about, but it will uh, eventually, if you do enough studies and stuff. You'll see it um, every now and then that bluish shadows aren't blue necessarily. They're, they might just be very desaturated and stuff. Again, it's very dependent on the light. It's very dependent on the, um, like the material of the, or the subject, I guess. So if it's a rock, it's going to behave a lot different than a piece of cloth and stuff like that. Uh, that's why it's important to bring up reference material as well, always. There's no excuse to not have reference material, uh, even just to, you know, you see how our material behaves and stuff. Just that can help so much. Uh, sometimes people ask um, what kind of uh, brush settings you use, if it's flow or opacity or, you know, whatever. Uh, they ask about that because getting a brush right in the very beginning is something for getting used to the way Photoshop brushes work is a little bit of a task to overcome. And there's one thing that I'm, you know, that I'm leaning toward. I used to paint with opacity. 
uh, uh, opacity jitter set to pen pressure, and uh, that you know I did that for a while, and then I kind of very slowly started to get towards painting with uh, flow. And uh, eventually, actually nowadays, I paint with both of them, but um, they're very, very, very subtle. So I'm almost painting with a um, with a 100%, uh, you know, 100% color brush. So it's like I'm painting opaque nowadays. So I have 100% here, 100% here, and then my brush palette. My, my pen press is on, but it's very... Uh, uh, in my Wacom tablet settings, it's very low, so as soon as I press a little bit, it's almost 100% uh, thick. And I do that because it, I don't know, it's very much, uh, first of all, it's easier on your hands. You don't have to press as much, and you don't have a lot of, you don't have as much uh, hand ache. And also, it actually looks better, um, full strokes like oil, oil painting kind of style it looks a lot better to the eye if you have a um, very uh, confident uh, shapes of color like full uh, shapes I don't know I, I just kind of lean towards it nowadays uh, so it's it's very much up to preference but you could try either three um, or well, actually, there's there's four options. You could paint paint without, which is what I do. You could paint with opacity. You could paint with flow, or you could paint with opacity and flow. And I've done all three. And eventually, I kind of lean towards this. They give different results, and uh, yeah, sometimes you see these paintings that are are very obviously painted with very wrong settings. Um, and yeah, it's just a bunch of, it's just tweaking and practicing and trying stuff, really. There's no, again, there's no golden solution as, as usual. It's just trying whatever you like best. It's fairly difficult to do all this talking and painting at the same time, I gotta say. I'm not used to it. Um, it's like my brain is, ha is having to do a lot more uh, than usual, but I'll get used to it eventually, talking and painting. I've been going for an hour and 20 minutes, I guess for now, so that's fairly good. Still got a bunch of time. You see when you zoom in, it's just a bunch of scribbles, really. Um, there's nothing fancy going on. It just makes the illusion of looking like something. It's a very interesting uh, piece of uh, geography here. I like the colors, I like the purples and stuff in the shadow. It's very interesting. 
uh, you can see here that the cold um, the cold shadow is actually a warm hue but fairly desaturated so it looks purple but actually it isn't really purple at all it's just a very desaturated kind of uh, muted red but in the environment it looks fairly purple All right, let's move on. I'm just gonna save it. And let's see the tree trunk here. So it's fairly low key. Oops. So here's a tricky uh, part of the image. Actually, that was very, fairly interesting to point out. Um, I noticed that it's looking purple again right here. So this value, this color. And instead of actually grasping for purple, I just did the same thing that I just noticed right there, is that it's actually red but desaturated. And I just went with it, just tried it, and it's actually fairly correct. So I would have picked purple if I hadn't noticed it here. And it would have been wrong. Uh, I would have noticed it that it was purple, that the purple would have been wrong, and then I would have had to search for the right color. But because I learned that it was actually desaturated red, right here I saw the same thing. And that's basically how you learn stuff. It's just from experience. You know, just notice stuff and remember it, and you'll learn to apply it eventually. You don't have to worry about actually, you know. I used to worry a lot about, you know, am I doing these studies right? Uh, is this even helping me out? But it does, you know, and you'll notice it. Just give it some time. You'll see that you're just going to get better and better uh, slowly, but surely. Um, so if you're worried about our studies actually helping me, don't worry about it. You know, that's basically what I have to say about them. Just keep doing them. They're not hurting you at all, and they're definitely helping you. All right, and let's move on to a little bit of a little patch of light here. That's really cool. I can see that it's saturated. Usually, when you have some uh, patches of light like this, the edges are going to be more saturated. Um, as you can see right here, actually, it's very prominent. The edges are very saturated, and then the inside is very bright usually get that when you're dealing with patches of color like this.
And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to pull this through because it's the same color. Right here. There's sort of rim light going through this entire branch. I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit because we still have some of that black um, from the base coat coming through. And I don't want that. I want to upscale the image a little bit because it's fairly small. Let's make it 3000. That's going to make it a little bit easier to paint. Because it was getting fairly uh, annoying. When you're painting at the scale of a couple of pixels, it's it, it just becomes very uh, difficult to get the correct kind of shapes and stuff. It's generally not that useful. I can see some more bluish values in here. For some reason, this part is less purple, but more aqua blue at the top here. And I'm just going to exaggerate that a little bit. It's making the image a lot more interesting. So, what I'm thinking about right now is the fact that 
this branch is everything but brown. So usually when you paint a tree, you'll think, you know, I'm going to make it brown and green. But what I'm noticing here is it's basically orange and purples, very desaturated, blacks, blues, greens, not that much blue, uh, not, not that much green, but more like uh, aqua. And it's, it's everything that you think it wouldn't be, basically. That's, that makes it a very interesting study. Um, stuff isn't the color that you think it is. It's probably the opposite, <laughs> essentially. That's what I'm picking up from this right now. Uh, right here it goes to saturate it again. For the rest of the image, or the, the rest of the the tree here is onto warm, saturated again. So we got a lot of these purples coming back. A very deep um, oranges here. I think what this is is subsurface scattering. Um, you can see uh, it's uh, it's a thing I know from CG stuff. I got to know it in CG uh, 3D stuff because I do 3D art as well. Um, and essentially, what it is is it's a concept that is especially prominent in skin. Um, when you put a lamp or a light in general under your uh, hand, you can see the blood kind of, you know, the red blood kind of seeping through. And that's essentially what subsurface scattering is. It's your, it's light scattering through an object and onto the other side again. And that's what you have here. It's the kind of glow that you see the orange glow is light getting through the branch and out of it on the other side. Uh, it's what makes skin red uh, on the shadow side, essentially. It's a very interesting property, something you really need to learn about, uh, among many other things when you're doing painting and stuff. And it's cool to recognize these things as well when you're doing studies. So I never would have thought a tree would have this much subsurface scattering. Uh, so it's fairly interesting. I, I might be able to use that later on if I ever do painting of a fairly fairly thin tree. I could play with the uh, I could play with light properties and just make it very subsurface scattery, and it's a very interesting thing to look at. So that's pretty cool to notice. Um, don't be afraid to, this might sound uh, a little daunting, but don't be afraid to actually read, you know, Wikipedia and stuff on these concepts. I do it all the time when I learn about new things. Um, if you're not sure about how reflection works, you know, just type it in Google and learn about it. Uh, it's not always painting that you have to do to get better at painting, essentially. You need to understand the entire world, like go outside and look at stuff. And uh, always when you're outside and you're, you know, going someplace in a car, just look at everything. Try to understand it, like really look at it and, and you know, see the shapes and how does it work. You need to, like, especially as an artist and uh, uh, freelance artist or someone who works in the game industry and stuff. You need to learn a bit of everything, essentially. You don't, you know, there's, there's no limit to what you should know. And that's the cool thing about being an artist, in my opinion, is that it's so variable. It's it's constantly something else. Like maybe, maybe tomorrow I have to design a big-ass, you know, bulldozer or something, and then I'll have to learn about 
how does a bulldozer work and how is it built and everything. And that's what makes it interesting every time. Just you have to learn about these things over and over. And it's probably the most uh, general job that you can get essentially. Uh, or you know, it's it's the the job that you learn the most general knowledge about for, or at least if you're if you're actually into it, you know, and you really want to know what you're painting. Most uh, artists will do research, and that's it's a lot of fun uh, if you're into you know knowledge basically. Some people aren't, you know, that's fine. Uh, I have a fairly obsessive hunger for stupid general knowledge, so that's totally cool for me. It's a part of uh, art that I enjoy, research. Some subjects more than others, but in general, uh, most stuff intrigues me to a certain extent. And it's definitely a big... Uh, A big plus. Um, all right, so it's looking fairly okay. I really love this branch so far. It's uh, just a mishmash of awesome colors, and uh, it's a great study. All right, so on to the leaves. We got half an hour left, approximately, and uh, that should be fine, I think, to do the leaves. So again, new later, and uh, I might just uh, make these pretty much invisible. I'll get rid of them entirely uh, later on. One thing I did notice is that my branch right here is very, it's fairly off. Uh, so I'm going to try and correct it just a little bit. Mm. It's still fairly off, but it's better. Uh, and uh, actually, let's move this. Like so. Okay. So let's get some of these leaves up in here. Um, I'm going to start with the dark color. Or at least what I think is the dark color. All right. All right, so let's block these things out a little bit. Might pick a different brush, actually. Let's get my flat brush.
I'm trying to get the silhouette uh, fairly, fairly good um, so that I can actually lock my transparency. That's the idea. It might not work out. But yeah. It's not going to be the final silhouette, but it's going to be. I, I'm trying to really get it, you know, as close as possible. All right, and then finally, I'm just going to turn the heat down. It is ridiculously hot in here. Just a second. All right. That should be better. Okay. Um, there's not much to say, really. This is just eyeballing. Yeah. I guess I could take the time to kind of have this kind of a weird asking a favor kind of thing. Like if you if you really like this tutorial and you're actually looking at it, like so far you've been going for about a, an hour and a half uh, or more. And you know, if you appreciate it, uh, feel free to share it and stuff. Uh, subscribe, like, uh, favorite, whatever. All that kind of stuff really helps me out. And uh, you know, it's, it's uh, it would really be cool if you do that. That really helps me out and uh, it gets more people to notice it. So that's always good for me and to actually not look this, you know, to actually make this more useful. So if a lot more people see it, of course, that only applies if you are actually content with this so far. So the same thing on the same actual account, um, if you have any ideas of maybe how I could do this, uh, it, if it's not that good, if you have any, any ideas how it should be better, or kind of requests and stuff like that, that's always, you know, very welcome. Just feel free to comment with really anything. Um, even if it's, like, even art related, if you have any tips or stuff like that, I'm totally open for all of that. I'm not really the ultimate uh, professional or anything. So I could totally uh, use um, ideas and stuff as well. That's all fine. So feel free, you know. Um, so we got this shape right here. It's actually going to stop so and then down here. And this whole thing is too too high, so okay, there we go. It's a bit better. I'm also curious if these uh, long real time videos, if they're actually, you know, if they're worth it, because uh, it's obviously obviously some work for me, but also. They're quite long. I'm not sure if anyone is going to watch the entire thing. Uh, 
because it's just a study, you know, uh, it's pretty intense. I, I usually watch tutorials on uh, my second monitor, so that makes it totally bearable because I can paint while I'm watching, but not everyone does that, I think. So it's probably pretty crazy to watch the entire thing. Uh, actually with attention and stuff, I don't know. Like if you prefer sped up videos, like feel free to just let me know and I might just do more of that. Maybe narrate on top of it like afterwards instead of real time like I'm doing right now. That might be a little bit better of an idea. I'm not sure about that yet. I'm going to keep making videos, I'm just not sure in which uh, kind of direction I'm going to pull it. Because I, I, I love actually making tutorials and stuff. Just for the sake of making them, I, I just like it. Uh, sharing ideas and stuff, and all that kind of hippie stuff. I really like that. But um, I'm just not sure which, which kind of way is the best. So absolutely feel free to get some, uh, some of your opinions in there. Especially this top part has a lot of little little thingies, so it's a bit annoying. Um, this brush is probably the best option, because I can also do the little branches. Basically this brush is a uh, it's my square brush, but I flattened it. Uh, let me show you here. I flattened it like this. And uh, also I made it like follow the angle of the direction of the stroke. So if I go down, it's going to go down. If I go like this, it's going to follow the initial direction of my brush. I could go down and then paint sideways to get a broad stroke, or I could just kind of do like this, uh, so to paint branches it's it's pretty easy, just, you know, tap stuff like that, it's a it's fairly, fairly good brush to do stuff like this, like trees and branches and little, little thingies, to get some little details going on, scribbly details. All right, and then the final patch here. It's almost touching the side of the image. I have 15 minutes left, so I'm probably going to have to hurry up a little bit. Unfortunately, the limit of the uh, competition thingy is two hours, so there is a little bit of a time factor going on. 
Uh, in this particular painting, I did it very linearly, so I did the background, then the little rock, and then the branch, and blah, blah, blah. Usually, you probably want to block out everything from the start, and actually, you know, that's probably the better way to do it, so to kind of gradually like have the entire image go better, not just piece by piece paint it, but actually, you know, it makes more sense that way, especially in a like work environment, you want to paint like that because uh, if you can't make your deadline, you want to show something, you know, you don't want to show this, you want to show something that has leaves, they might not be very detailed, but they might have leaves, and this piece then might not be that detailed again. So I probably shouldn't have done it in this way, but especially the background kind of demanded to be painted first, because uh, it's a very distinct, very different background, all soft edges and stuff. But yeah, the work approach, um, it can vary a lot, but you know, with these just studies and stuff, uh, I don't really think about it that much. Usually, I just paint until it's done. Uh, it's I'm not used to having a time limit like this, like two hours. Even though two hours is pretty, it's fairly long for a environment study. It's actually, you know, plenty. Uh, but this particular painting is a lot of scribbly stuff, so it does take some time. All right, so I'm content with this silhouette so far. I'm just gonna like copy it first of all, and I'm gonna lock the um, transparency on it, and actually go to a different brush. Let's pick my random brush 2 and start painting some colors in here. Brighter, a lot brighter, brighter. These are always difficult to paint. Uh, I've tried a, a lot of different approaches, a lot of different brushes and stuff. It's, it basically just stays difficult no matter what you do, honestly. There's no real perfect uh, solution to painting leaves. It's just a lot of, a lot of scribbly stuff, honestly. Uh,
It's a little more saturated over here. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I might, might have noticed that uh, I was quite quiet for a while there. Um, sometimes when I'm doing these kind of paintings, I kind of zone off. I have some pretty uh, calm, weird music playing right now. And sometimes I just kind of get into the zone, if you will. And you just kind of doze off and paint on automatic. And yeah, it's, it's almost like meditation. Just really calms you down and stuff. I don't know. I just I I, I think that's an awesome trait about painting, especially landscapes. It's something you know, especially in this kind of rendering, like scribbly, detailing part. You can kind of really just you don't have to think about anything. You can just zone off and kind of you know do whatever. Essentially, as as you know, Feng Zhu always says in his videos, you don't have to worry about anything anymore at this point. In the painting, it's it's all it's all there. You know, it's completely set. Uh, the proportions are there. The values are there. It's just some scribbly rendering. So that's totally easy and fine to do. And it's true. It's 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 really uh, calm and. You know, you don't have to worry about anything anymore at this point. It's totally, totally chill. I'm probably going to switch brush before the end. I have like seven more minutes, unfortunately. Uh, didn't really get to finish the leaves as much as I would want, but uh, it's okay. So I'm actually gonna clean up these leaves a little bit right now. Just kind of softening out the uh, very edges of the painting, or of the leaves at least. Sorry.
Oops. Five more minutes, it says. Zoom. Almost there. All right, I'm gonna call it done. And uh, there's a few things I wanna do before I actually end it. So just gonna copy the entire thing. Copy merged, filter, uh, sharpen, unsharp mask. About 60 to 70%. And it's just gonna look a little bit better. And finally, some more little touches here and there. All right, and let's put my autograph on it. So, like so. All right, so that should be it. I'm gonna just crop it and save it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's it, that's the study. So I hope you've learned something. Um, I know I have, um, and that's kind of, the idea, but uh, yeah, the leaves are a little bit unfinished. That's probably the only thing that I would uh, absolutely change about it, but in general, it's really okay. So yeah, that's it, that's the video. Um, so yeah, like I said before, just uh, let me know if this was anything you liked. Um, feel free to share it and stuff, if you did. And if you have any ideas for what I should do next for a video, uh, always totally cool to leave a comment and stuff. And yeah, that's it. So see you and goodbye.